one. We will bring this order, uh, meeting to order, please. Uh, March 14th, first meeting in March, and uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minor, minor correction there. I said it was first meeting in March. It's first regular meeting in March. We did have a special meeting on the second day of this month. Uh, I guess that's not too earth-shaking of a correction, but uh, uh, we uh, will go next to a roll call, please. Mr. Wusterberth. Present. Ms. McGuire. Here. Mr. Gajewski. Present. Mr. Cummings. Present. Ms. Cresco here. Mr. Weed. Here. Mr. Byer. Here. I think the here's beat the presence on that. <laughs> I think there were more. Okay. Um, Agenda additions. Is there anyone that wishes to uh, adjust the uh, the agenda as presented here? Add to it, detract, question? Okay, hearing none, uh, public comment is our next thing. And uh, we have two public comment periods. This one we ask that you fill out a card giving us a, at least a hint of what your concerns are. Then there is a public comment at the end of the meeting where we don't need cards or anything like that. So do we have any cards? We have one card from Pete Simpson who would like to talk about the lift station near the village of Sanascota. Okay, Pete, if you would. Good evening. Um, it's come to my attention over the last several years, and I know everybody else here is probably aware of it, the lift station that's located on Perimeter Road just before you cross the tracks after you enter the base on the main entrance. It's still in disrepair. Um, depending on the day, it's pretty rank. It's, in, in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, it's raw sewage. So I'd like to know what the uh, plan is to fix it on a time frame. Well, we have uh, talked with uh, F and V, our company, Fleece and Vandenberg, that does that. Out. Have they filled you in on anything regarding solutions to that, or new new pieces and parts, or? Well, there is no easy fix. Candidly, it's it's gas because the force main is uh, a long run from downtown up to there. We did install a charcoal filter at one point, and that didn't do a lot of good. We've now contracted with Spicer to evaluate um, the best means to repair the lift station, and uh, we're hopeful that coming out of that, we can talk about prospective solutions for the gas, because the gas is what's causing the corrosion in the wet well. Um, but as we uh, talk about it this evening, there is no ready solution. We look at uh, whether valves along the lines to allow gas to escape would be helpful, those kinds of things, but uh, that appears uh, not to be an effective solution. So I think everybody's well aware of it. Um, if it was readily and easily fixed, it would have been done a long time ago, but hopefully having the engineer involved now and spending a significant amount of time there will give us more insight. And they have mentioned some prospective solutions, but we haven't zeroed in on one yet. Okay. Is this the same lift station that Matt Hinckley would talk about, that he would refer to his younger life when they could smell it where he lived at the southern extremity of Cedar Lake Road? No. No, no, no it's in the villages. Right. Yeah, I know, but on the what base. he was talking about is something that came from the base, but uh, oh. this is in the villages, okay. It's pretty far from Cedar Lake. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Cedar Lake Road. Yeah, it's far so, from Cedar Lake Road. Yeah, yeah, he could smell it. Uh, you know, he remembers that vividly. <laughs> Must have had a good wind. Um, yeah, it was dependent upon the wind direction. So, so, so basically, in a nutshell, uh, we are aware of it. Uh, we have tried various things. There are more things we can try, but as of tonight, we have no solution. But we are looking in the process of refurbishing that lift station. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of money, time, engineering, all the above. All the above. 
Bob, what's the time frame to get back from Spicer? Well, they're, they're doing the study right now. I would expect that they'll have that done within four to six months. We contracted with them some time ago. Um, some of the other things we had pressing with our wastewater improvement project um, uh, got set aside, frankly, but they are moving forward with it. So, uh, but to be clear, that will not result specifically in a solution to this issue, maybe more input, which will lead to a solution or insight. Can we get an update from them for the next meeting? Sure, sure. Can, can we also ask them, both Fleece and Vandenbrink and uh, Spicer, have they run into this kind of problem in other communities? You know, we can't be the only one. You know, and if so, what have they done? Okay. Okay. Is it every day, Pete, or is it? Is I it couldn't tell you. I don't drive out there every day. It's just, you know, I don't live out there. I just drive by there and. I make sure my windows are up and I turn my fan off. <laughs> okay. But, you know, people that drive through there every day, I'm sure they mm -hmm. smell it. Have we had phone calls at the Township Hall regarding this? Not recently. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, that's what we can tell you right now, but we're aware of it and uh, we've tried different things. We're not through trying different okay. things. So thanks. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, Bruce Miles would like to talk about a water line easement. Okay. Please. Yep. <coughs> uh, what I'm here about is. Um, Oh, a few years ago, I dropped off some replacement easements for the water easement down here by Mill Street. Most of you probably weren't on the board. At that anyway, uh, there was a water line went across my property from US 23 to the river. And um, after the work was in progress, uh, the engineer and the contractor came in and said, well, we can't put the pipe where we got it marked on the map, on the easement. I said, okay, fine, what do you want to do? He said, well, we, want, we got to move it up so many feet and put a new pipe in, or put it, um, make a new easement. So I said, okay, go ahead and put it in, and then give me an as-built easement description so I can get the paperwork done, and, and um, so the easement covers the property where the water pipe is. Okay, well, anyway, I never got that. You know, everything gets caught up and gets going. So, anyway, I don't know, about three or four years ago, I brought over some easements and I gave them to Mr. Stockard. And somehow they all got lost. I never got one back signed by the township. So I brought one over here, I don't know, about six weeks ago and asked to have that one signed by whoever can sign on behalf of the township so that uh, we're going to extinguish the old easement and the new easement all we're, we're just going <coughs> to put it right over where the pipe is and we need to get that signed and i got to get it back and get it recorded no okay. com nothing complication about it but all right just <coughs> something. are you aware of the most recent uh, I am. Um, in terms, I guess, a couple of things. In terms of the easement getting lost, I think there's maybe a misunderstanding. There were several meetings uh, the, in the time frame Mr. Miles is making reference to a lot of discussions about the easement. There were some legal issues. There were some issues relative to the width, et cetera. And essentially, we could not come to terms at that point. And then uh, more recently, Bruce has brought in a revised document, which I am well aware of, and trying to work through some of those issues with the township attorney before getting back to him. 
and maybe try to find some middle ground as some of the issues. And I understand this frustration. It seems like a relatively straightforward thing, but there have been some concerns we've been trying to address. So uh, hopefully we can get back to him within the next few weeks is frankly what I'm hoping. But, but so, we it's are not, so it's not a sloppy uh, operation. It's just working out some details here. I mean, as far as sloppy, I mean losing things. No, I do not believe the document was yeah. lost. There, was, there were um, extensive discussions and attempts at negotiation to, to uh, come to terms with a document that, that it would be potentially mutually agreeable. Mm -hmm. Either one of you. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear a word you said, Bob, so <laughs> I can't no, respond. Sorry to about it. that. Sorry. Um, where on 23 is this, Bruce? Right down here by Mill Street Bridge, just this side. Finish line park. Bruce. This side of Mill Street Bridge. That's in Osable Township, isn't it? Yeah. It is, but Oscoda Township owns the water line. Water okay. Too. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to go through what you told him so I know what's going on? <laughs> Essentially, I said I, there must be some kind of a misunderstanding in terms of the documents getting lost. because. Uh, my recollection is there are a lot of discussions back and forth, attempts to change language, negotiation, et cetera, and we didn't come to conclusion. And I, I am currently well aware of the document you provided uh, several weeks ago and have been talking to the township attorney about it, and hopefully we can get back with you within the next few weeks regarding that document. Well, I want to get that thing recorded tomorrow. understand. You know, I mean, it's been going on a long time. And there's no reason for it to be dragging on. If you got something you want to discuss, we'll discuss it or whatever. But I'd like to hear a motion tonight, you know, authorize whoever is authorized to sign on behalf of the township to sign because we've got some, get it recorded and get it down to Lansing. They're screaming and hollering, giving us deadlines down there. So, well, I. I Certainly, is there a problem? certainly. Well, I don't think this is the place to get into the specifics about the document, Bruce. But but uh, it's it's going to be up to the board here as to whether they want to authorize moving ahead with the document. But that, for, in fairness, they haven't seen it. So my suggestion is, we make a good faith effort to work through the issues, and then if there are any remaining issues, I will bring them back to the board, and they can decide whether the document's acceptable in that form or not. But, but they will be presented with a document and ultimately it will be up to them to, to establish a direction. But I think in fairness, they need to see the document, they need to know what the issues are from our attorney's standpoint, et cetera. I uh, don't know what issues there would be. It's a simple document that- yeah, There must puts, be- It just yeah. takes the, the, the easement and puts it over the pipe. Hmm. Did you, in any of your submissions of this, did you ever say that it had to be done by the 15th of oh, March? Yes, we've talked about that many times. At that date, 15th of March, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Okay. Well, well yeah. I don't mean uh, on this particular one, no, but I mean, yeah. it's been some time and it's not a great big deal. Yeah. Okay. All right. And all we're doing is Move an easement over here. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, but anyway, I need that a lot quicker than two or three weeks. I mean, I, I got to get it and get it recorded. Mm -hmm. If you want an easement. If you don't want an easement for the pipe, that's fine. We'll just extinguish the old one if you'll sign that. Okay. It doesn't make any difference how it goes. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, anyone else? Any other cards? No, sir. Okay. Uh, then we'll go to the consent agenda, approval of minutes. Anything on? <coughs> anybody have anything on? Um, I, I have just a question or, or the board's opinion uh, on the minutes for the special board meeting. I mentioned we had a, a special meeting on the second of this month. If you'll turn to that, a um, couple things. Um, but the fourth line down, fifth line down, confirm appointment of 
Mr. Cummings as township trustee. Um, is that the way we want this? I, in my opinion, we just, and it was my fault that in the February meeting when Tim was, we had the vote and Tim won 80% of us, uh, and that was my concern that somebody would win with two votes and we, we came up with four votes uh, versus one, that's 80%. Uh, uh, and then we congratulated Tim and we moved on to a couple of other things and again, it's my fault, I forgot, hey, we need to have a motion to, to make this election, you know. Uh, now if that's a confirmation of an appointment, okay, but it, it isn't in my mind. Um, so you guys think about it if you want to leave it that way, uh, okay. <laughs> What is it you want to change on that? We get rid of that first word, confirm the appointment. We did officially vote, you know, we missed the deal. Again, it was my fault I'm running these meetings and I didn't say, hey, okay, after the election. Now, we need a motion to to appoint him. Uh, you know, you, you need an emotion all the time. But, but this was just to confirm the choice that we had made. Is I'll take it out, I don't care. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't what, know if you if, can take it out, can you? That was yeah. the minutes. No, we yeah. haven't approved them yet. Yeah. Well, that's just my comment on that. You know, um, that we didn't vote on him. We didn't have a motion and a supported motion on the February 22nd meeting. And again, it is my fault. Uh, sometimes when I neglect things, people jump on me a little bit from the board, but and all of us, I guess, kind of lost it there. And we went on to a couple other things. It was at the end of a rather long meeting. and. Uh, so the first chance we had on the 2nd of March, we did that. We went ahead and, and uh, voted uh, with a regular motion. And I don't think the motion said we're going to confirm this or repeat something that we had already done, because we didn't do that on the February 22nd. But maybe it's much ado about nothing. But more importantly, the next thing, Alcona Health Center correspondence regarding Ani Medical Center. Um, we actually had a visitor from Alcona Health Center. Uh, what correspondence indicates to me emails or paper letters or something. Should we in the meeting for some future analysis five, ten years from now that it should say we actually had uh, Mrs. Uh, Chris Baumgartner visit and talk with us? Yeah, answering questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't it doesn't indicate that a human being was actually here that night at right. all. So, and it should. She was here. Yeah, and spent yeah, quite a bit of time should, with yeah. us. Pictures in the paper, stuff like that. So, can we change that? I would support that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now the other thing, maybe to confirm the appointment, uh, it sounds like we're doing it twice and we didn't do it the first time at all. So, and again, but but it's okay. It's, it's no, I'll change it. All right. I'll make everybody happy. No, just make me happy. So, um, okay, that's all I have regarding the minutes and stuff. So. Uh, how about the financial report and uh, to the tune? This is a three-week gap, and Jamie mentioned the year before the meeting started. It's a rather modest amount for a three-week deal, but $77,660.86 uh, uh, payment of bills in that time period. Anybody have a question about any of those items? No. Anybody? No. Okay. Uh, Last part of the consent agenda is we have um, three um, items, informational items from the uh, superintendent. Uh, just a reminder that we do have a strategic uh, planning work session uh, this week. Uh, waste management contract update on where that is and some items regarding uh, the televising of this program, the PEG channel. Anybody have any questions about those at all? Um, now, in the organization of this agenda, Ann, you had an informational item too, right? Not a consent agenda, though. Okay. It's just a regular information that I'll go over. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right. 
Um, anything uh, else? Uh, if not, I need a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. So moved. Okay. And Support. supported by Ms. McGuire, and I believe the motion was by Mr. Weed. Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Worstworth? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. <coughs> Okay, moving along, uh, we have the superintendent's report, um, and uh, we mentioned the three informational items. So uh, let's move. There weren't any questions at the time, uh, so action items. There are about four of those, I think, four or five. Uh, five. First, first one is administrative secretary employment recommendation. Yes. Long-serving administrative secretary in the police department's ret retired, and to address the vacancy, a recruitment and selection process was undertaken, and that results in a recommendation that the current part-time clerical assistant, Gina Walker, be transferred into the full-time position. Uh, the recommendation includes uh, the fact that the beginning pay rate would be 14.23 per hour. Uh, which is step five or year five on the pay scale. Uh, that's suggested as a move from 1385 in recognition of the additional responsibilities. If approved, the transfer would take place immediately. Um, and I note also that a question has come up uh, as of late last week um, from the collective bargaining unit uh, relative to the transfer and how we would uh, treat uh, accrual of benefits for purposes of seniority. We've got an, an established practice there. Um, we've got an established practice there uh, whereby the um, employee who moves to full time status does not uh, maintain the seniority or years of service for purposes of accruing benefits that they had carry over from part time. Uh, there's a question here uh, in terms of impact on her in, in one particular uh, aspect. So I indicated that we would be willing to talk about that, uh, but for purposes of this evening, uh, we should assume that the uh, uh, recommendation is based on the, the uh, established practice. So mm -hmm. I say that because I may be reporting back with something in the future, depending on how our discussions go, um, but don't have anything this evening and may not have anything moving forward. Okay, um, but the position has been empty since March 1, right? Or before, a day or two. Uh, although there has been some coverage. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, and uh, any discussion regarding uh, the appointment, uh, transfer of uh, Gina Walker t from part-time current position to uh, full-time position as administrative secretary? Any discussion or questions? Bob, can you explain to me like the choice of uh, starting out on year five on the pay scale? Well, the, the underlying premise is that um, that is the next step above where she is now on the pay scale for a clerical assistant. And the position has additional responsibilities. Okay. And... Uh, this the, Gina was selected by a team of three, right? Yourself and the chief of police and one of the sergeants. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to transfer Gina Walker to the full-time administrative secretary position. Support. Okay. The motion by Mr. Weed with support from uh, Mr. Gayaski. Anything further? Questions? Roll call. Mr. Gayaski. Yeah. Ms. McGuire. Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Wistabar? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Second item, um, uh, <coughs> contract operations uh, RFP uh, process and, uh, and uh, direction. Yes. Uh, a request for proposals for contract operation services was issued February 2nd. Uh, several addendums followed. At the pre-proposal conference, we had five companies in attendance. Two subsequently indicated that they were going to withdraw, uh, not submit proposals. 
We also received a request for an extension of the submission deadline, which was granted. So uh, uh, based on that, I expected that we would get uh, multiple proposals. However, uh, Bob, just to, for the audiences, we are talking about water and sewer services. Correct. Yeah. I don't yes. Okay. On um, March 4th, we received a singular proposal from F&V, which essentially reflects maintaining the current regional operational configuration, and board members uh, should have received that by separate communication. Uh, I did not want to publicly disclose the uh, bid amount at this point in time so that uh, if we were to rebid, that process would not be compromised. And in saying that, I'm not suggesting that we rebid, but wanted to acknowledge the option. Uh, specifically, my suggestion is we proceed to develop a renewal contract agreement with FVOP. Uh, when we undertook negotiation efforts uh, beginning uh, last fall, uh, that was under, with the premise that renewal would be a desirable outcome uh, for the community. And then a significant amount of effort was expended through the uh, price solicitation process uh, to validate the economics. Um, and at this point, uh, essentially, we have what we have. Uh, I note also there are time constraints to consider um, with the expiration of the current contract coming up in early May. If the board were inclined to proceed in the direction of developing a renewal agreement, a uh, new contract, the company did submit three and five year proposals, which is what the solicitation sought. Um, if you had a chance to look at the numbers, basically the differential is a 3% increase annually on the five year proposals and 4% on the three year. Um, so at this point, uh, I, am, I, I note also that there is an alternate pricing proposal involving uh, quarterly meter reading. Um, I think that's something that um, raises uh, some potential issues for us. Certainly we could talk about it. We could also consider adopting it in the future. But uh, note that they did, did provide that as an option with some cost savings. So with all that, I'm seeking direction from the board as to potential acceptance of the proposal, and if so, uh, the particular term that we will be looking at in terms of uh, plugging numbers and the, the duration into the agreement. Well, first of all, uh, well, do you have any general questions about the whole topic? And then we can get a little more specific. Uh, anybody? I'm thinking uh, more specifically, what's the will of the board or what's the thinking of the board three years or five years if you're agreeable that we should do this? Uh, I'm a five-year guy because I would like to see this contract expire at the same time the other two units do. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with five. Yeah. Uh, the other two being... Uh, Tawas Utility Authority and uh, Husra, the water, you know. I think it would put us in a little, give us a little more muscle as far as the next step. Perfect negotiating. process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just. I agree with that also with the thing of that when the contract <coughs> expires, when it comes time to renew, we've been under the 3% annual increase rather than the higher 4% annual increase. Yeah. So we're not starting off higher at the end of the contract. Yeah. the next round. <clears throat> I do think we need to go with monthly meter reading though, but have a provision in there that if we do a more automated type system that their rates would adjust accordingly for that. You want to go with monthly, isn't it? Am I wrong? That isn't that what we do now? It's monthly. Right. Did you stay with monthly? Right. Yeah, no change. Okay. Yeah, because uh, what was the offer they offered us of a better price if we would go to quarterly? What what length of time beyond a month? Quarterly, I believe. Quarterly, yeah. three months. Yeah, yeah. But I think, as you pointed out in some earlier discussions, that if somebody has a water leak or something like that, they can go on for a long time right. before it's discovered or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. They would still do that on a. On a walkthrough basis, won't be updating the the uh, meters where you can drive by and just read them as you're passing through. 
they'd be walking house to house? Uh, it, it, yeah. it would save a significant amount of labor and, and in line with uh, Mr. Weed's suggestion, we could try and incorporate something into the contract to acknowledge that, maybe without getting specific numbers, but an acknowledgement that there would be cost savings and the ability to sit down and, and discuss it. If we can nail down something now, certainly we, we would make that effort, but at least some kind of a reopener. Yeah. And we, so we solved all the uh, problems we had with them as far as overtime? You, that's been paid and reconciled as of last year, yes. What's this five-year contract say? Well, that would be one I of the... could read it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we solved the past issues. Moving forward, uh, basically, it says now, the contract says now that uh, they need pre-approval to, uh, uh, unless there's an emergency, if they're going to incur non-routine services, and that that was sort of the the language was in the contract all along, uh, but we can try to flesh that out some more in in the renewal. But I think that is fundamentally the understanding is that pre-approval would be required. And what does pre-approval accomplish? <clears throat> we then know what the costs are that we're going to be confronted with now. But as far as the time they spend during normal working hours fixing whatever, are they still going to count that against us so they're in effect double billing their labor hours? I, I believe the understanding is that non-routine services would not be charged for labor expended during regular hours, if that's your question, right. and we can try yes. and confirm that. Yeah, because that's a little gray the way I was reading it. <coughs> Any other discussion or any other questions? I'm looking for a motion to say yes or no to uh, the acceptance of a five-year agreement with uh, Fleece and Vandenbrink, FVOP. Do we need to get answers to some of these details first before we do that? What's the will of the board on that? We could well, do a contingent, too. I guess my assumption is we would try and address some of these questions in the contract document, and then if that uh, approach was considered to be um, unacceptable, the board would continue negotiating. Okay, understood. I don't understand. Uh, Make a so, motion. So are we going to vote yes on this tonight, or a no on this tonight, or are we going to wait until these are ironed out? I guess I'd like to see a contract that has a little bit of language in it before we vote on it. So you want to but table we're going to proceed. But we're going to go labor. ahead and move forward with mm -hmm. negotiating the contract. Under the concept of a five-year. Right. right. Okay. That's right. the motion. Okay. Yeah, well, we won't have an agreement until the contract is signed, and if right. we want to be clear on that, we can We're put it in the motion. We're going to move forward to the five years. Okay, and who made that motion? I will. All right. Support. <laughs> <coughs> I'll get it right. <laughs> you got that? Employer? So. You'll let me know if you didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, then uh, if there's nothing else, uh, then we will... Uh, uh, call the roll, please. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Wusterbart? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Item three. Uh, wastewater Improvement Project. Uh, uh, two things. Progress payment number five and a change order number two. To be Yes, this would be uh, from RCL Construction uh, in terms of the progress payment in the amount of $89,898.52. The work elements are uh, spelled out in the attached documentation. I note also that there is an invoice from Spicer Engineering uh, included in the packet at a cost of uh, or an amount of $3,585. That did not get into the list of bills, so I would ask that the board consider approving that as well. Um, that would be uh, part one. Part two is change order number two, which has been proposed at a cost not to exceed $9,884. That would involve installation of a 
new, newly designed valve in the smallest lagoon cell. Um, the change orders prompted by feedback from our contract operator expressing concern that the existing designed valve uh, would not, when opened, allow the cell to drain entirely, would leave approximately five and a half feet of sewage in the cell. So a different type of valve has to be refabricated and installed. The $9,884 is considered by the engineer to be uh, probably a high estimate. There's a lot of labor involved there. They think it probably could be as little as $6,000, but nonetheless, uh, it's a significant sum. Uh, having said that, it seems like uh, uh, an advisable thing to do for purposes of maintenance and ease of operation moving forward. It doesn't really affect the treatment process, but there undoubtedly will be times when getting the majority of the material out of the cell would be helpful. You could pump it out with a pump, that kind of thing, but that's going to be labor intensive and probably not very convenient. So. Um, I spoke to Spicer about the situation and um, unfortunately the original valve cannot be returned. It's a special item. The contractor uh, priced it and um, we will be uh, obligated to pay for it. So in order to uh, hold us harmless on that part of the deal, Spicer's agreed to reimburse the township $2,300 for that valve. Um, so with, with that <coughs> caveat, and I have a written confirmation of that from them, um, with that caveat, um, uh, the two items again are uh, progress payment number five, including the Spicer bill, and potential approval <coughs> of change order number two. Okay. And did I hear you say that the, uh, the valve in involved in change order number two is like made especially for us for this design it's not something yes. you pull off the shelf in Chicago or something like right that. so the contract the original valve also is kind of a custom so it can't be restocked I see thus somebody has to pay for it gotcha all right well let's split this up uh, but before we do are there any questions about either the progress payment number five or the valve change order anybody I guess on a change order, why wasn't this identified in the original engineering project? Well, <laughs> um, yeah, that's my question. I mean, yeah, they well, do. I have the same question, and um, I think the fact that Spicer is willing to contribute something towards uh, making this right is an indication that they they feel they have they bear some responsibility. Whether the amount of responsibility is is adequately compensated in twenty three hundred dollars, I guess is. A, a value judgment. What's your, what's your, uh, off the top of the head, feeling that $2,300 covers about how much of the whole thing, the new valve and the labor to change them? Well, as, as I understand this, so the, 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 they were looking at it on the 2300 offsetting part of the 9800 I don't think that's actually the case. Essentially, we're obligated to pay the, the for the original valve no matter what. So they're, they're going to hold us harmless there, so I think we're probably looking at in the end a six to eight thousand dollar additional expense. Now, what happens to the old valve? Well, nobody can use it. Let's give it to Bill Hamlin to put on uh, eBay. He it was pretty successful. <laughs> well, they were interested I in whether, yeah, there were ways to dispose of it and make it of some value to, to either us or them. I guess I'd want to hear more information from Spicer as to why it was missed in the original design before we go along with change order number two, in my opinion. Bob, what percent of the project is done? How far along are they? Um, they haven't gotten too far with construction yet. They basically have gotten the sludge out of there. But I understand there is some urgency uh, with doing this work now. Um, if, there's, if there's concern about the financial arrangement and we believe the change order is merited, consideration might be given to moving ahead and then, and then pursuing further re additional reimbursement from the engineer if we believe that's appropriate after uh, hearing their explanation. We do have a percent of contingency, don't we, that we're fluctuate for the project anyways? We do. We do. 
Well, this is backwards, but Steve, would you like to go for the second part and make a motion that we uh, table this till the next meeting, two weeks? What is, is there going to be adverse effects if this is tabled for, or postponed for a few weeks? I, I guess uh, my impression was there was some urgency. I can ask that question if, if, if the board would give me the latitude to go ahead if there are going to be adverse effects. If not, we'll withhold, but ask for a written explanation of why the yeah. engineering was not caught. Um, in the first place. I mean, either way, we're going to have to do it. Well, so, I mean, we can get the explanation and go ahead with the change order so they can continue the project. And if we're we can, if we can wait, we will. Have they said, have they played hardball like that, that uh, if you don't vote on this uh, change order on uh, March uh, 14th, uh, we're going to stop the project? No, well, what they would do they is, is install based on the original design. Mm -hmm. I think we're only hurting ourselves if right. we don't make it happen. So I make a motion we approve change order number two in amount not to exceed $9,884 and that we re-engage Spicer for their level of responsibility in this matter. Okay. So moved. All right. Uh, Mr. Weed makes a motion with support from Ms. Carrasco. Anything further on the second part here? Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? <coughs> yes. Mr. Wistabarth? No. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Uh, yes. Okay, motion has passed. Uh, let's go for the uh, <coughs> first part, the progress, uh, number five progress payment of $89,898.52. Any. Okay, I make a motion. We make progress payment number five for eighty nine eight ninety eight fifty two, and also the three thousand five hundred eighty five dollars for Spicer. Where did the three thousand? <clears throat> I mean, I see a progress payment for eighty nine eight ninety eight. I don't see a, an additional three thousand for Spicer. There's a separate invoice in, in the packet there. No, I missed it. Support. Okay. Work for Mr. Weed. Further questions, Steve? No, I'm just looking at the invoice. Anyone? The 3000 extra is for what, Bob? Uh, it's not extra. It's, a, it's just an engineering invoice that normally would have been in the list of bills that did not get in there. So they send their invoices along with these progress payments. It's uh, invoice number 180198. So it's almost kind of like their progress payment. R right. They their bill us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We normally pay them as part of the, right. the list of bills. Yeah. If you go back and look, there's usually one in every, in every packet that yeah. we get. It just didn't get in in time. Looks like <coughs> 58. Yeah. Sound okay. okay. All right, the motion is uh, from Chris uh, is to pay the 89, uh, <clears throat> 898.52 and the 3,000. And that is supported in? 3,585. Okay, 3,585. Roll call, please. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Wisterbarth? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Fourth item, the Iron Bell Grant Award Agreement. Um, yes. Board members might recall that uh, authority was, was provided to seek funding um, for uh, planning an additional segment of the Iron Bell non-motorized trail. I've provided a copy of the grant application uh, for some of our newer board members for purposes of information and also attached correspondence indicating that the township has in, in fact been approved for funding in the amount of $27,000. That would be 90% uh, uh, of the project amount, uh, the total of which is 30000 so we need to make up the $3,000 match, which we had proposed. They have also provided a memorandum of understanding and agreement that would require execution on behalf of the township if we are going to proceed in accepting and implementing the grant. Specifically, it would provide for planning the route from the Oscoda Area School Complex on River Road to Old Orchard Park. So 
So I'm looking for authorization to have the supervisor and clerk execute the agreement if that's acceptable to the board. Um, Aaron, you're our guy from the bike path project. Uh, this is a little bit of a superficial part of this big question, but Iron Bell. What's the back? What, what's the name? The bell is spelled with an E at the end, as in Belle Isle. The name Iron Bell is derived from the beginning and end of the trail, starting or ending at starting or ending at Ironwood, and then the next end of it's at the Bell Isle. Oh, it is Bell Isle. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are Bell Belleville mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, anything else on this uh, award? How done? long do we have on this grant? How soon do we got to no. use it? I didn't see a deadline in there. No, I, I didn't think either. I did either. Question it. There, normally there is. But yeah. this is something that uh, that we want to have done by the end of 2017. So hopefully by that point we'll be able to start construction on that section by 2018 or 2019. October, I think, 2017. For payment. Yeah, October. I don't know if this, this applies, Martin, but I, and, and I know this isn't the Natural Resources, uh, Department of Natural Resources Trust Fund. It is not, right? It is right. a That's different deal. Question, yeah. But the Trust Fund, for instance, You have a well, date on it. Did it. Yeah. And all grants, you got a, a window I'm, that you got to complete it. With. I remember going down to Lansing to one of their quarterly meetings and telling them, "Don't give up on us. We're going to use this, you know." And uh, because it had taken a long time, and we were sitting on four hundred and sixty thousand dollars, but I don't recall a actual deadline. But I felt it was in necessary for someone to go down there and say, hey, don't give up on us. We're, we're still working on this. We're working on more money. And uh, yeah, our, our contractor to put the pier together backed out on us in less than 24 hours before the deadline. A little scary. But, uh, <clears throat> so we had to go another direction, get another deal. But gave us time to get some more money. Work. So anyway. Um, Maybe there's a deadline or maybe not on this one. There is, in fact. Yeah. Um, the, the project period is from when the, the trail coordinator signs to September 30, 2017. 2017? Yeah. Okay. 31st of 2017? 30th. December? <laughs> September 30th. So December 30th? 30th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that doable? Oh, yeah. You hope so. Yeah, final yeah, and then like a final request for the fund reimbursement by October 15th. So. That's an easy part of the project. <laughs> okay. We're working on the hard part right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we do go ahead uh, and uh, accept this grant. Round two memorandum. Uh, do we have support? And nope. have you guys execute? support. Okay. Byron McGuire. Roll call, please. Mr. Weed. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. Ms. McGuire. Yes. Mr. Wistabarth. Yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Ms. Crasco. Yes. Mr. Byer. Yes. Okay. Final item for uh, Township Superintendent, uh, water meter reading methodology. Yes. Um, some of our longer serving board members may re recall that we got a water audit uh, analysis performed, um, and which was actually delivered to the township last August by the M.E. Simpson Company. And the perp that was part of the uh, strategy to try and control water loss in our community and limit it. There were several recommendations set forth in the audit. The highly, uh, most highly prioritized appeared to be metering of the Silver Sands subdivision, which uh, our contract operator is uh, evaluating. However, one of the recommendations that was advocated by the contract operator, uh, in addition, which is also referenced as a recommendation in the audit, 
is to begin billing in units of 100 gallons versus 1,000. Um, to uh, further the, the uh, information found in the audit, uh, F&V had asked Simpson to comment specifically on the benefits of doing that, and that resulted in a fairly lengthy email which is attached to my report. I had uh, candidly expressed some uh, reservation about the potential for significant water loss gains with this uh, particular concept due to the fact that you always catch up, if you will, on those readings the following month. Um, however, at any given time in the system, it would also seem pretty obvious that there is a, a, an apparent water loss embedded in that you've delivered the water into the system, but anything less than a thousand on any meter hasn't been billed for. So that shows up as loss in our calculations. Uh, also, when we take a meter out of service, any of the, the uh, usage that's less than a thousand gallons is lost. So if we do a meter change out program or anything of significance, uh, that, that loss can be fairly significant. Um, in the final analysis, I believe that the uh, approach uh, in billing uh, of using hundreds of gallons will have some water loss benefit. We just don't know, frankly, how much. But it seems like a reasonable step in eliminating a variable we now have if, for instance, our water loss, and, and one thing I didn't mention in the report, it looks like it did drop last year from 38 the previous year based on what the auditors are indicating to about 30. Nothing to write home about, frankly, but it's better. So using that 30% number, if, say, 6% of that is uh, due to this billing uh, process, then you know your, your real target is significantly smaller in terms mm -hmm. of getting down to a, uh, what would be considered a normal water loss percentage. So uh, based on the premise we might want to consider doing that, staff took a look at the uh, procedures required, the technical aspect of it, and our billing software supports that it. it's a pretty uh, straightforward changeover. Um, so, uh, all things being told, uh, I had suggested that uh, we begin billing in hundreds of gallons beginning with a cycle uh, on March 27th. I think this evening I'm going to suggest we push that out a month uh, because probably we're going to need to adopt a revised rate structure uh, acknowledging, it wouldn't change the rate, but acknowledging that we're, we're billing in hundreds if we decide to head in that direction. So we'd be looking at uh, April instead of March. But uh, with that understanding, uh, I'm uh, seeking potential approval from the board to modify the unit of measure uh, subject to whatever rate uh, adjustment might be appropriate and begin that process in April so that we can get notice out to folks. And I think the notice is somewhat important because there will be for uh, some people, and it will vary account to account, uh, a perceived increase in the bill or uh, an actual increase and in that that catch-up will take place and then it should stabilize month to month thereafter. Has there been any discussion on the type of notification you're going to give the customers? Uh, we had talked about maybe putting something on the bills. We could put something on the website. In the paper? Could, the paper. We could put something on the sign in the front if the board thought that was appropriate. So technically, just so people are aware, their bill's not going to go up. It's just going to be billed so we can account for the water that's that's sitting there because that's that's a big question amongst them where they'll come in one month and say, how come my bill is so much higher? It says I use 4,000 and I only used 3,000 last year. So then we have to explain that it doesn't roll over and tell you if you're sitting there with 999 gallons of water in there, it's only going to show 3,000 even if one click over is going to make it 4,000. So automatically you're getting billed for that 1,000 in gallons that you used last month. So I think with the 100 gallons that's going to make it a little bit easier where we don't have that sitting there and they're going to understand how the billing works and how much actual water they use each month instead of this, well I only use 3,000 but in, in reality they used almost 4,000. So I think it will help out in that way too. Right. It's definitely much more accurate month to month. <coughs> you picked uh, your original date was March 27th. That's a Sunday. That was 
what you wanted? That's when the billing cycle starts. Okay. Yes. So do you want us to, uh, you said push it back? Oh. You know, the last Sunday in April was 24th, is that? Doesn't it run 25th through 25th though, regardless of what day it falls on? Yes. So. Yeah. Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So 25th of April? Okay. All right. Uh, further discussion or a motion that we do? Uh, Bobby talked about the software being able to support it. Was um, that a discussion with the utility billing clerk also that she's aware of the change coming and has had a chance to look at how we're going to handle things? Yeah, she's well aware of it. She's, in fact, the one who spoke directly with the SNA to confirm that, that we could make that okay. transition. Okay, do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we go from thousands of gallons to hundreds of gallons effective with the 425 billing cycle. Okay. Super. Okay. Um, motion by Ms. Carrasco with support from Mr. Cummings. That we do go ahead uh, with the, uh, the new cycle of 100 uh, gallons and it'll be effective April 2-5. 2016. Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Worcesterberth? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Support? Yes. Um, Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, we move on, uh, I believe, <coughs> to uh, Community Development uh, Coordinator Ann Richards. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Thanks. your first action item is VA ex expansion <laughs> project. All right. <laughs> Sorry. The VA expansion project. Uh, this evening we have invoice number nine. So actually that uh, bills for this uh, meeting were higher than the 77000 because Bob and I both have additional uh, bills that weren't included in there. So it really wasn't a light month. It was a heavy month. But mm. anyways, invoice number nine, uh, dated March 9th, is in the amount of $179,864 for work completed or stored to date. Um, and again, it's put on the agenda this way by your request back in 2015. We've been going on this project for uh, a little over a year now. Um, not with the extra construction part, but floor coverings have been ordered. Um, the cabinets and ca casework were actually delivered this week. They're all stored actually in the um, undeveloped part of the hospital in the hallway, um, not in the suite itself because the floor coverings have to go in first. So um, the whole suite has been um, completely primed and painted with one coat of finish paint and the mechanical inspections above the ceiling have been completed and approved and work has begun on the exterior vestibule entrance. So things are progressing nicely. And I, I'd like to sneak that little uh, explanation from uh, last meeting is that <clears throat> this money is being paid by the township, but once a project is finished, a large portion of it is reimbursed to us by the the Veterans Association or administration. Right, the, the tenant improvement component. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. I'll make a motion that we go ahead with invoice number nine for $179,864. Support. Technically, though, that one goes on the prepaids for the next list. Thing, All right. Just so you know. <laughs> Ann was kind enough to give me a tour, though, out there today. And if you haven't been out there, you need to go check it out. It's very cool. Really? It looks just like it's a completely yeah. brand new building. Oh, it's amazing. That's great. Yeah, it'll be on your stops mm -hmm. on Thursday, Thursday yeah. Tim. Bob and I were going to take a, a tour, and then I think that was the first of the storms that was raging outside. Mm -hmm. We didn't we didn't take the tour. Well, <laughs> we made it in there. Yeah. Wait so on schedule. Hmm? Wait on schedule for completion. Uh, well, we're close. Mm -hmm. Yep, the we're close on schedule. Hmm? The, the, answer the good is side, I hope. For what? The good side. Oh, well, we're, I mean, we, it all is the inside work. We're maybe a week or so behind because we had a delay with that floor coverings being ordered. Um, the exterior work can't start until the restrictions are lifted from the road um, commission. So it just depends on what happens there. Um, Shoff and Associates are doing that work. They're 
ready to go when those restrictions lift. And I think they estimate two weeks to complete that. So, so hopefully we'll be on schedule. I'm the, um, they're itching to move over to their new space, put it that way. So. Anything else on the VA? Okay. Next item is an informational nope. item. You need a roll call. Okay. Roll call. okay. Roll. Sorry. That's roll okay. Roll call. Mr. Worsperth? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. Crosco? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Next item, informational item, but uh, this is a pretty important one. Uh, there's a lot of wild rumors about water quality that are going around this town. And uh, so, Ann, you have some information from the uh, Michigan Department of Health and Human uh, Services? I do. Thank you. So please, li please listen, everybody, at home or here. Listen so. closely. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, in December 2015, the U.S. Air Force and MDEQ sampled private residential drinking water wells near the former Worsmouth Air Force Base in Oscoda for prefluorinated um, chemicals, or PFCs. Following the discovery of PFCs in drinking water wells um, from a mobile home park near the former Air Force Base, those results were shared with those well owners. Based on their interpretation of the results, um, the District Health Department, too, has provided health advisory information to the owners of the tested wells, recommending that they not drink or cook with the water. The MDHHS, which is the Michigan Department of Health and Human Service, um, Services, supports the advice issued by the District Health Department number two. At this time, no assistance is being offered by either the agency to provide short or long-term alternative water supplies to the um, affected well owners. In an effort to hopefully extinguish some of the possible rumor mill that has definitely ignited, uh, staff would like to reiterate the very a few very important facts in regard to this advisory. Municipal water for Oscoda, which um, originates from Lake Huron, Lake Huron and is provided by the Huron Shores Regional um, Utility Authority, Authority or HUSHRA, is not impacted by this health advisory. Further, this advisory is not for all wells within the township boundary, but instead has been narrowed to a specific area between the former Worsmouth Air Force Base, Vanetton Lake, and Vanetton Creek. To date, uh, staff has and will continue to be involved in discussions with the, both the state and local health departments, MDEQ and Air Force, as they continue their due diligence on this contamination and work towards a possible remedy for this very unfortunate situation. Uh, there is an upcoming uh, public open house and meeting regarding the public health and cleanup activities at the former Worsmouth Air Force Base. In addition to uh, discussing, discussing the effects of this recent drinking water well, um, situation. They're also going to be discussing the Do Not Eat Fish Advisory for Clark's Marsh that was actually issued in May of 2012. The meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 23rd, which is next week, at the Ascota Methodist Church. The open house will take place from 2 to 4, and the community meeting will be at 6. And I'm assuming there'll probably be something in the paper, um, I believe, this week in regard to that public notice. So um, I, I know that. Um, my office has received several calls. The water department has received several calls, and we just wanted to, and I'm sure the yeah, I'm sure Natalie has out at the villages of Oscoda. Um, but municipal water is not affected whatsoever, and the drinking wells, which I personally have a drinking well at my house and on US 23, but um, again, it's contained to a very specific area. About 24 residences were checked, and, and not to belittle the fact that it's a—I mean, it's, it's scary for those 24 people, obviously, for 24 houses. So, um, but it is not a municipal um, water supply issue. So, we will continue to notify the public as we receive information. Okay. So, what is the joint effort doing for the 24 people that are affected right now? I mean, living with water without water is not an option. Right now, they're doing nothing. What do we have to do to get something going quickly? I mean, they're going to be coming next week. I guess Bob. No, I no, I understand yet. that, but I right. mean that's next week. This mm -hmm. is today. I mean, have we <coughs> called our senators, congressmen. Yes. Are they doing anything? We're no. The, we're in the process of scheduling a meeting later this week with congressional aid um, here in Oscoda. 
but um, so far that that is where we are. And part of the reason is because the levels have not exceeded what the state or federal guidelines recommend as being an issue. So the health department made a call, made their interpretation, so. Even though the levels do not exceed the, what they consider to be the norm, this is just like more or less precautionary, then your levels are too high. It's just your levels are in the water, so caution is required, basically, yes? They're making their own determination, basically. Well, they, they haven't really established a regulatory level uh, at this point, but uh, I think, and it certainly, we don't want to be in a position of trying to speak for those regulatory agencies, but it would appear that they took the more cautious approach in issuing the letters. Um, but going back to Mr. Wusterbar's question, we had a conference call with folks, and um, there, there are a lot of unanswered questions right now. And we tried to pose them and get folks thinking about it. I mean, filtering water is potentially an option and those kinds of things. And hopefully, um, by the time the, the uh, governmental representatives are here on the 23rd, they will, they will have some feedback for people. But that was exactly our question, is what, what did you uh, expect in terms of being able to assist these people in the short term, given the position you're taking relative to this drinking water? And Bob, can you supply the board with the name from the MDEQ and also the Air Force is managing this? We sure can. With contact information? Yes. Thanks. The board should know and the audience should know uh, that both the letters that were sent out by District Health Office number two uh, were without any pre information to the township. We did not know those letters were going out. Uh, also, the uh, rather extensive article in the Detroit Free Press uh, last Friday, I believe, there were, was no contact. The writer of that did not contact any local government officials about that. So, uh, uh, kind of on a, uh, out of the loop on a couple of these, you know. Well, and it, it's not like it's something brand new that just popped up. We've known, and they've, they've known about this, and we've had meetings about it in different areas for the township, so it's not like it's brand new. Well, the well contamination um, situation is December, basically, is when we were made. But they've been monitoring and doing right. different things for the PFCs in the area for years. Well, they've been doing it for a long time, but I mean, if I was sitting there and I got this letter in my mail, especially with everything that's going on in Flint right now, I'd be quite concerned yep. if they're saying do not drink or do not cook. Well, yeah, I'd be concerned too. So I think Sorry. we just, as a board, we need to contact these people and mm -hmm. tell them that it's an urgent situation up here. I think in a... Uh, telephone conference call uh, you guys were involved in I think you asked the question about why didn't you tell us this that these letters were going to go out we're going to be deluged with uh, calls and panic and so forth and they didn't really have an answer is that right Chris Bush the um, I think I forwarded the email the tax colleges with um, the health department with the state apologized for them not notifying us before they sent the letters out. Mm -hmm. So, but otherwise they have been notifying um, us in the steps and in their reports, but they did not send the, the heads up that they were sending that letter out mm -hmm. to the well owners. And we've already correct. expressed our urgency to the senator, correct? Correct, yes. The state senator? Yeah. Well, our contact has been with the U.S. Uh, congressman's aide at this point, but we intend yeah. to talk to the state folks as well. I mean, uh, the extent of uh, concern among the public. Didn't you were telling me today that someone from Delaney called you? Oh, no, that wasn't me. That was Jessica. Oh. No, that was me. Oh, that was you. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I knew it wasn't me. Delaney, <laughs> Curtis Township, Alcona County. Lady called. Mm -hmm. Concerned was, about her well water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's well, it, I mean, it, it started back obviously with the sure. with the Flint, you know, situation and so on, and yeah. so any. Every, you know, 
know, everybody's concern, I'm sure, is heightened. Yep. But that's why we wanted to read this out and indicate that the municipal water you know, is right. not. It's two different things. It's two different things, and it's not all wells within this township. It's a, it, again, I'm not trying to take away from the 24 wells that are affected, right. but it is not all wells within Oscoda Township. So we're not looking at a, um, at this time. Can we make that line item in our work session? And for the audience that you're maybe a little church challenged, uh, the Oscoda Methodist Church is the one that is directly behind the Oscoda Township Hall. And that is a week from this coming Wednesday, not this Wednesday. So probably should have, uh, am I right here, the, the state representatives, state senators, possibly representatives of the U.S. congressmen? It's our understanding. Strong likelihood that they would be there? From, from the state, for sure, and based on discussion so far. I shouldn't say for sure. It appears very likely the state uh, political representatives, and uh, certainly I would expect at least a representative from, from the U.S. Congressman's office. Okay. Hmm. And I guess also to note that J.D.'s crew is going to be there taping the public meeting. It will not be a live um, replay but it'll be take it'll be shown later on on our channel so so that will be shown to the public that's okay. all i have thank you mm -hmm. thank you <clears throat> okay next we move we have one uh, resolution uh, we have to deal with tonight and uh, that would be a uh, resolution regarding uh, funding of senior citizen uh, millage and uh the number isn't on there, but my calculation uh, would be this will be resolution number 2016-07. Correct. <coughs> yes. Um, if adopted, this resolution would authorize placing renewal of the senior uh, citizen millage uh, before the voters at the August primary election. The uh, term of the millage, if approved, would be five years uh, at the uh, rate which has been rolled back uh, by the various uh, taxation control mechanisms of uh, 9.89 cents per thousand of value. Uh, that would result in an Oscoda Township of a collection of about $28,220. If the board is inclined to proceed, I would suggest that the resolution be approved uh, subject to concurring approval of a Asabal ta Township of a similar proposal. And we have shared this particular uh, format with Asabal Township. Any discussion? Need a motion to uh, vote on this resolution? So moved. Okay. All support? Mr. Gajewski, Mr. Breyer. Anything further? Roll call. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Worcesterbarth? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Moving on to other, we have a couple items. Chamber of Commerce, uh, property use request. Yes, we have the uh, annual, I guess, request from the Chamber of Commerce to use uh, the Ascota Beach Park for Art on the Beach. In keeping with our past practice, I've prepared a draft letter uh, and I'm seeking authorization to transmit that letter. The letter would approve uh, the request uh, subject to providing insurance um, in conformance with our special events policy and um, in, with the understanding that we are uh, not committing to honor all requests as spelled out, we'll make a good faith effort to do essentially do the best we can, which usually, frankly, amounts to uh, full satisfaction or close to full satisfaction of the request. But we do have uh, limitations from a staff and resource standpoint, so uh, that caveat seems to be uh, prudent. But in any event, um, seeking authorization to sign and send that letter, thereby acknowledging approval of the request. Well, this is one of our biggest events here in Oscoda, so uh, motion? I'll make the motion that we grant the request to the best of our ability. Okay, 
support. All right, the motion is to grant the request to the best of our ability. That comes from uh, Ms. McGuire with support from Mr. Wisterbart. Anything further? If not, roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Wisterbart? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, uh, second item, uh, similar a little bit, uh, Canoe Marathon, uh, the program book for th that event. So this would involve potential participation in the program book uh, in terms of community promotion. Uh, in the past, we have purchased a full page ad, a copy of the ad that was uh, used most recently, I believe, was included, and also the minutes from last year um, demonstrating uh, that we had approved uh, the full uh, page color ad at that time. The cost uh, is, again, $500 if we're inclined to, to follow the same course of action. Wish, what is the wish of the board uh, as far as this program? Go ahead with it. Do we have time to change the pictures or no? Um, no. Not certain. No, it's due today because of the timing of we didn't get it in before the last board meeting. They're going to call us tomorrow and I mean we can ask them if you want to change the pictures but the deadline is today. I just would like to change one of the pictures to the yurts that we talked about in the, and change the wording maybe a little. If not, that's fine. Who gets the contact call? You, Chris? Mm -hmm. Can you ask them about, can we tweak at least one of the pictures you're concerned Yeah, get rid of the tent. And yeah. What do you want to do for wording? Uh, I don't know. Just tweak it just a little, I guess. Well, yeah. or you could leave it, actually, and just put a picture of the ear in there. Yeah, because it says newly constructed yurt. Yeah. So. so you want to change the tent to yurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have pictures available? Of I think so. I think Mary has some. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm guessing they're going to say okay, as long as we're... If not, we I, they just may, but they just may want the commitment so they can make space for us at right. this point. Sure. So yeah, we can ask if they can change the pictures and stuff. So I think if we commit, we might have a chance at that. Okay, I make a motion that we do go ahead and, uh, with this annual uh, community promotion uh, advertisement in the program for the canoe marathon. Support. Thank you. For full page. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Worcesterbarth? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. We're at the second uh, public comment. Uh, anybody wish to speak? Okay. Uh, excuse me? Sure. Arnie LaRich, and I'm a resident of Oscoda. And I've just got a question about this public meeting that's uh, being held uh, next week. Has the township been invited to it to participate? I don't think formally. Uh, okay. If not, then I suggest that we request that the township, because it's my understanding that uh, the township has a significant um, and if you stated, you know, you're a little upset that we weren't, you weren't notified. More than a little. Okay. Um, but the, the, uh, the base and where this pollution is coming from, a lot of it is owned by the township and it's our population. So I would suggest that the township take almost an equal role and at least be in a participant and on all the invitees lists for the future also. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way to start. Right. And I'd also like to suggest that the township at this meeting 
outline where the township uh, responsibilities and uh, participation in all of this with the Superfund site and how it works because the public is not going to understand where it all sits together, mm. fits together. Just a suggestion. Okay, thank you. To be fair, we have been made aware of when that informational meeting is, and the, the, I think the, the understanding from the folks from the other agencies is there will be township representation there. It's a public meeting, so. But we have not been formally invited. No, we've not. Yeah. But, but to I think they. Right. I think it's a very good point that yeah. we make them aware that they need to focus attention on the leadership of this township also to make us more involved with it rather than mm -hmm. kind of treating it like we're just part of the, I don't know, part of the masses <laughs> that, you know, because we're the ones who are making some decisions mm -hmm. here in this matter. Right. The reason I came up with that question is I looked at the draft agenda for the meeting mm -hmm. that they published in their letter that they sent you. And you're not even mentioned, unless it's introduction of elected officials. But that's I would bet that they would, would be st state officials, probably. Right. right. Yeah. And my comment, I, I think you know this, my comment about being left out of the loop before was, number one, uh, when the letters were sent to individuals about their wells, we knew nothing about that. And number two, a less government or organizes the Free Press article, and, and that's a journalism thing, but they didn't contact anybody here with that front page above the fold thing. Right. But as Ann said, yeah. the township knew that the samples had been taken, and the study yes. was being yeah. done, and all that. So yeah. someone made Everybody a mistake in not well, sending a notice or a copy to you, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. it's, I think the future is more important that the township be an equal partner in this reserve your We rights. need to squawk a little bit about, hey, we're here. You know. The squeaky yeah. wheel. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Anybody else have anything to say? Okay. Uh, board comments? Anybody? Me? Sure. I'd like to thank everybody who worked the election, who were the election inspectors, uh, the information desk, all of the workers. Thank you very much. Job well done. Thank you to all the voters who came in. We had an overwhelming turnout, far more than we anticipated, and it ran very smoothly. Thank you, voters. Um, we also have the petitions in my office for anybody who would like to put their name on the ballot um, for November. For any position, there are seven positions. You may put a petition in for any of the positions, whether there's someone sitting here now or not. Uh, and we also would like to put a call out for anybody who would be interested in being an election inspector. Um, they just have to fill out an uh, application. They have to, um, just some simple questions. Uh, it is a paid for the day position. It's also paid for any classes you have to go to. Um, and if you would like to get any further information on it, you can either come in and see us, pick up the application, give us a call, 739-4971. Yeah, something nine four nine seven. I don't usually call myself there, so. But um, we're available if you have any questions, and um, we would like very much to have you as a, an election inspector. So, let's call. Christine, just for clarification, for everybody who wants to put in their submit a petition, when are they due? They are due as a partisan. If you want to be partisan, it is April nineteenth. If if, if you're nonpartisan, because these are considered partisan positions. So if you want to come in as a nonpartisan, I believe you have until June 19th to do it. But April 19th. Uh, July. Is it July? It July? I thought you said July for the nonpartisan. Okay, I knew it began with a J. Um, didn't, didn't look to see. January. But January, yeah. So yeah, just, if you're interested, <coughs> just come in, give us a call. We can look on the, on the petition and, and see when the date is. Um, pretty simple procedure. Not scary. Mm -hmm. So, and just an informational point: that township officials all over the state are being elected. This is not just Osco or Iasco County or something. It's a four-year term. Uh, it's easy to remember. It coincides with presidential elections. Uh, I don't know how that happened to start eons ago, but that's the way it is. 
So, uh, and these roles uh, are not staggered like school school uh, board roles are. You know, somebody's up for election, somebody's not. You know, all of us, everywhere statewide. So, okay. <clears throat> Anything else? I'm looking. Can I ask another quick question? Since sure. You the topic. Sure. Uh, I'm getting blamed for this. The question is, uh, I understand that uh, the elections were, the positions were staggered at some earlier time, and I was mm -hmm. wondering why they're not, and is there a reason that they're not staggered now? Uh, or why they shouldn't the positions be? Positions up here? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Oh, just they've up here? I, I don't think, I, I think yeah. it's always been a, no, whatever have, the rules. We used to have two, two years terms. Really? Trust me. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, because it's a big board, and yeah. a big board kind of takes a big part of the, the pie of the voters. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, from so my experience in other parts of the country. Yeah. Well, so am I. Uh, because I, uh, that as, be something to state as the newspaper it. editor pointed out, uh, the high school government teachers should know these things, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I, I, I am, I can't give you any. Maybe a that. future discussion. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'll uh, give you a call when I find out, because I am going to dig into this. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah, so. As far back as I knew, it was always the four-year thing, so I don't know yeah. when it changed. So, so thanks, Arnie. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>